Hey everybody, so today we have a analog versus digital tape delay shootout. I have my Echoplex EP3 tape delay and we're going to see if we can get the same sounds from my Strymon timeline. So let's get into it. Hey everybody, John here. You might know me as the guitarist for the Sea Monkeys and Tinfoil Zeppelin. Hey, those aren't real bands. So today we're going to be comparing the sounds of my Echoplex EP3 tape delay with the Jack of All Trades delay machine, the Strymon Timeline. How close can digital really get to analog? So the guitar for all these examples is this Gibson Les Paul R9, and if you're a cork sniffer, I replaced the pickups with Lawler Imperials. And the amp I'll be using is a Orange TH30 paired with a Orange 2x12 cabinet with Vintage 30 Celestians. I recently did a clean tone shootout between a bunch of amps that I have and the Orange did really well. If you want to check that out, here's the card. So let's get into a nice slapback. Echoplex. Timeline. Echoplex. Timeline. Echoplex. Timeline. Echoplex. Timeline. Echoplex. Timeline. Okay, so the Echoplex has three main controls. Um, there is a fourth one we'll get into in a second. So the sustain, that is the number of repeats. The volume is the echo volume, the strength of the repeats. And then the time, the echo delay, is it has an arbitrary 0 to 35. This isn't milliseconds based, but you kind of just run this thing over and the farther to the right is the longer the delay. So to get that slap back we were just doing, it's all the way over to the left. So the fourth control here is a record level that you have to set with like a little screwdriver. And I usually just have that set right in the middle and I really don't mess with it unless I'm using my Strat or a guitar with lower output because this this controls the level of the input um, of whatever guitar you're using. So let's go over some of the settings on the timeline here. Okay, so uh, some easy ones here. The time here was set at 100. I matched it with the Echoplex. The Echoplex only had one repeat, so that's what I got going on here. And I approximated the mix of the echo repeats here with the timeline. The filter adjusts the tape age so it could simulate an old tape. What happens with the old tape is it modulates a little more. Sometimes the repeats aren't as crisp and I know that um, my tape is a little bit old so if you were to have it all the way to the left, the knob, that would mean like a brand new tape in theory and all the way to the right would be like a super super old tape. Mine is pretty old. There's not really like a lot of wow and flutter happening so this is where I set it and it pretty much seems right. The grit, this affects the tape bias, how well the machine is biased. Um, there's a lot of different components that you kind of need to adjust. Think of it like a tune-up in your car. Um, a, according to the Strymon manual, a perfectly biased uh, tape machine would be at roughly 9. I've been using mine a little bit more lately, and it, it has been biased uh, recently, so I kind of put it, where is it, right about there. A little bit unbiased, quote-unquote. So the speed knob happens to be the tape crinkle, and uh, it kind of has a tape irregularity as the tape gets old or if certain components in the Echoplex are rubbing the tape the wrong way. Uh, mine seems not that crinkly. It seems pretty good. So this is where I put it, you know, at roughly 9 o'clock. The depth knob controls the wow and flutter of the machine, and in my opinion, this is where the Echoplex really gets a lot of its character. So I know from what my tech tells me about my particular Echoplex is that the uh, the motor is a little bit old, it's a little bit tired. I'm thinking about getting it rebuilt, the motor, but pretty much 
what affects this wow and flutter, the modulation that's so cool with the tape, is a unevenness of the tape going across all the various components because the motor isn't pulling all the time at the correct speed, at, at a uniform speed. So I kind of approximated, you know, right here in the middle because it's not too bad, but you can definitely hear it. So that kind of affects the modulation and a slight chorusing of the machine. Okay, so let's see what this nice slapback sounds like in more of a band type situation with added drums and bass. Echoplex. So the next sound I want to show you is when you turn up the delay time and kind of make like a cool repeating riff with chords. I'll show you what I mean. Echoplex. Timeline. Echoplex. Timeline. Now let's turn up the delay time. Echoplex. Timeline. Echoplex. Timeline. Let's check out the settings. So for the longer delay riff, here are the controls. As you see, I had to adjust some of the filter grit. I had to adjust these for almost every one, even though in theory it should be the same. I try my best to get it to sound the same as the Echoplex. So also there are two parameters that I forgot to show you. We have a tape speed. Uh, depending on the condition of your machines, some tape machines, they run faster, some run slow. So the timeline has two settings, normal and fast. I found that the normal is the closest. And the other thing is a low-end response because the tape has a very warm low-end. And this is where I approximated it for almost all the examples except for the lead. So it's more towards the plus side. Okay, so the controls for the longer repeats, I just pretty much turned up the echo volume to four, and to get a few more sustained echo repeats, I turned up the echo sustain to four, and here's where I put it for this example. So now let's hear what this repeating delay riff sounds like in a band type situation with more instruments. So I have a drum machine going, and I hired the best bassist I could find. Echoplex. Here's a brief history on tape delay. So in the 1940s, studios were trying to recreate reverb, actually. That's where this effect came from, um, in order to simulate recording in a larger space. So what they would do is they would chain together two reel-to-reel -reel tape machines, one recording and one playing back slightly later than the original recording to give the illusion of space, to give the illusion of reverb. So in the 1950s, inventions such as the Echosonic Amplifier, the Binson Echo Rec, the
the Watkins Copycat, and eventually the Echoplex EP1 brought this tape delay effect out of the studio and into the hands of players and regular people alike. And here we are in the modern age where we have lots of modern tape delay machines as well as digital machines recreating the original effect. So what makes these analog tape machines so cool? Well, I'll tell you. The first thing is the tape, man. The tape does a couple things. It adds a warmth and character that digital machines find hard to reproduce. Also coming in with the tape and the machine motor itself is the slight modulation you get. It's difficult to reproduce because it's sort of an inconsistent modulation that's very natural sounding. The third is a lot of these machines have tubes and they have preamps in it. This Echoplex EP3 is a solid state unit but the preamp is highly sought after and it's actually been reproduced in other type pedals as a booster. And they smell great. After this thing has been on for a while, it fills up the room with a slightly oily, warm type smell. It's hard to explain, but I love it. So this next example pairs these delay machines with an overdrive pedal to see what it sounds like for more of a lead type sound. So let's see what the settings are. Okay, so the settings on the Echoplex for the lead, we have the delay time, you know, set at the arbitrary five, a little longer than normal slapback. The sustain is at one repeat, so it's all the way to the left. And the echo, I brought it down a little bit to the three, so it's not too overpowering. Okay, so the settings on the timeline, all I pretty much did was I adjusted the repeat level down to zero or down to the, all the way to the left, so it's just one repeat and, uh, the delay time to match the Echoplex was 150 milliseconds, about there. Echoplex. Timeline. Echoplex. Timeline. Echoplex. So one of the coolest features on this Echoplex tape delay is the oscillation runaway feature and it happens when you crank up the echo volume and the echo sustain and then you mess with the echo delay. You'll know the sound I'm talking about. Let's see what it sounds like with the overdrive sound. Echoplex. <laughs> Let's try to get a similar sound out of the timeline. All right, so having heard all these examples, what do you guys think? Me personally, they're very similar. I, I was really surprised how close the timeline came in a lot of aspects of the tape. Obviously the timeline didn't have the hiss that you hear from the tape heads on the Echoplex, but honestly I kind of like that, a little bit of that background noise. When I first got this particular unit, a couple of the components were old and they were going and it was out of whack and the, and the tape hiss was insane, but there's things you can do, capacitors you can change, slight adjustments you can make to make the unit not so noisy. I kind of like the noise on these older units and that includes some of the Fender amps I have too. The oscillation effect, you can't get the same kind of response on the timeline as you get from the Echoplex. That's kind of a minor thing, because like you're not really using that all the time, but that's just something. Also, the modulation that you get from the tape and the tape machine motor, the timeline, it recreated it, but it felt like it was more of like a chorus. See, in, in my opinion, the thing with this tape modulation is it's more of like an inconsistent modulation. It's not always like the same thing. It kind of has ebbs and flows to it, faster and slower, depending on the machine, and also depending on where in the tape it's going around the machine. And I felt that 
And when I really listen close, especially on the longer repeat type riff, the Strymon timeline, it kind of had like a uniformity to the tape crinkle and the wow and flutter, whatever you want to call it, kind of had like a computerized uniformity that wasn't quite there. I think you'll agree that the difference between these units isn't that much. Is there a difference that you can hear a, a certain warmness in the Echoplex sound? Yeah, totally. It's definitely warmer, definitely more organic sounding. But in a pinch and in a band mix, I think you'll find it hard to tell the difference between the digital Strymon uh, Strym Timeline and the Echoplex. But me personally, I prefer the Echoplex. In this digital age we're in, where seemingly everything is being taken over by the computers, by the old ones and zeros, I like the original analog stuff, even though, yeah, it's louder, yeah, there's not as many parameters to tweak, but I just like carrying around this Echoplex. And when I bring it to sessions and gigs, people that haven't seen it before have the same impression that I felt when I first heard it. Wow, that's what delay is supposed to sound like? There's a certain organic warmness that the digital stuff can come close, but it's never going to be, in my opinion, the same thing. So this is John signing off. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to reach out to me at shredpro411 at gmail.com and we'll see you down that dusty trail.